Hey, what's up everyone? It's Araceli here again with a new video where I read the creepypasta I Am Real by Zelrog T. Apocalypse. A link to their profile in the story will be provided in the description of this video. NSFW Content Warning This story and video contain subjects that may not be suitable for all listeners. If subject matters involving rape, torture, and captivity may be a potential problem, you may want to X out of this video now and check out any of my other videos for less triggering content. So sit back, get yourself comfortable, and get ready for I Am Real. I Am Real I don't remember when the nightmares began. It feels like they've been plaguing me for so long, I've forgotten what it feels like to get a restful night's sleep. Every night, I relive the same horrible ordeals. It's gotten to the point that I dread going to sleep every night, but I just can't seem to stop myself. I just can't stay awake. My name is Anna. I'm a pretty typical high school girl. Scratch that. I'm completely typical. Normal house, normal neighborhood, normal family, normal friends, normal education. Nice and normal, just the way I like it. The only thing that's really abnormal about me is these dreams I've been having lately. When I first told my friends about them, they laughed and said I was worrying over nothing. Dreams can't hurt you. Put your mind on some happier thoughts and eventually the nightmares will go away. Since then, I've tried really hard to follow their advice. Really, I have. I've been nothing but cheerful at school, led by my normal family home life. Now that I think about it, nothing in my life has changed recently. Nothing in my life has really changed. Well, ever. I've been living just the way I have for as long as I can remember. Why did I suddenly start getting these nightmares now? None of it makes sense. There's no reason for me to be having dreams like these. I still remember last night's. Luckily, it was one of the tamer ones, comparatively speaking, but it still robbed me of a perfectly good night's sleep. I was chained up in the dark, stone room, with no windows and one iron door. My dream self must have been kept there for days because it smelled of my own... leavings. Eventually, a dark-skinned man came into the room and dropped a bowl of foul-smelling food in front of me. It was covered in mold and consisted mainly of what looked like scraps of what his master must have thrown out. But my dream self didn't care. I ate the food eagerly on all fours like I had done before. I didn't feel hungry. It was just a dream. I couldn't even taste the mold. Maybe my dream self was just desensitized to these sensations, or maybe I'm just overthinking things. I usually can't taste or feel acute bodily functions when I'm dreaming. My friends find it weird that I can smell things, though. I wonder if that's not normal. I hear most people don't even dream in color, so maybe there's something at least a little special about me. It's been almost a week since I took their advice of having a positive outlook, and I finally decided that it wasn't working. I need to talk to someone about it. I mean, really talk and I don't really feel comfortable talking to my parents about the kinds of dreams I'm having. I haven't told my friends any details about what ha actually happens in the dreams yet, either. But today, I'm going to talk to them about it. I just need someone to listen, to know what I'm going through. I told my friends about the dreams, leaving out some of the messier details. They just started making fun of how weird and twisted I was inside, calling me a masochist and a pervert, bondage queen. They were just joking, of course. I knew that, and they knew I knew it, but still. I wish they had listened to me more seriously. I guess part of having such normal friends is that they don't really know how to deal with abnormal things like I'm going through. Maybe they're right, though. Maybe I am just a pervert with some weird suppressed desires or fetishes or something that I don't know about and are manifesting themselves in my dreams. But then I recall the awful, terrible things I've gone through some nights. There was no way that I wanted any part of that. Not me, and not any part of me, no matter how deep down it was. There are a word for these dreams, and that word is nightmare. There was nothing glamorous about them. And if the nightmares continue, I'll try talking to them one more time. Maybe this time they'll actually listen. Last night I was in the same room again. This time, I was chained upright, hanging from the ceiling with a ball gag in my mouth. Once again, I was naked, like an animal. My body felt weak. 
You know, like when you try to punch in a dream and it feels like you're punching through water and your muscles just don't react and move like they're supposed to? My whole body was like that, totally unable to kick or struggle or put up any kind of fight. And then the dark-skinned man came in. This time he was accompanied by his master, a man in a white stage mask who I dreamed about once or twice before. Those were always the worst dreams, and when I saw him walk through that door, my heart sank, as I knew that this was not going to be a pleasant night. It was easy to tell what he wanted, as a dark-skinned man lowered me just so on my chains. The masked man began to violate me just as he had in the past, and I couldn't resist at all. I knew it was pointless to fight a nightmare. The affair must have lasted for several hours in dream time, but fortunately it, to me it only felt like minutes. I submit myself to the inevitable and just like that it was over, and again I lay weak and naked on the cold stone floor. The two men left with an amused banner, and in my weak and hazed I woke gradually up to reality. The first thing I thought after waking up was, what the hell is wrong with me? The whole depraved masochist argument might start to actually hold water if I keep having dreams like this. I knew I couldn't tell my friends about this one. They would just hold it over my head with an onslaught of I told you so's and joking insults until I finally dropped the subject and we inevitably started talking about something more mundane, like the new guys at school or that falafel stand that just opened up nearby. For now, I just had to grip my teeth and bear it. The day passed like any other boring, normal day, and before I knew it, I once again found myself lying in bed, dreading what was to come, but knowing that there was nothing I could do to prevent it. After all, it's not as if I can just never sleep again, right? I hear that supposedly a person will die if she goes for more than ten days without sleep. Or maybe that was water. Could be both, probably. Whatever. I'm too tired to think about anything like that right now. I'm just too tired. Last night's dream was even worse than the one before it. I was strung up again, but this time I was whipped, beaten by that dark man. Apparently I had done something to offend his master, and even though I had no idea what it was, I apologized and apologized over and over again. I apologized. My efforts were wasted, though. It was plain to see in his eyes that he was enjoying striking me, and the only way it would end was when he had his fill and finally felt satisfied. Each strike of his whip stung in that weird sort of dream pain that you sometimes feel in really, really realistic dreams. It wasn't one of those things where you don't actually feel anything and just suddenly jump in your sleep because your body flinches in reaction to what it thinks it's coming, but an actual sensation of pain. Or... Not really regular pain, but more of a sort of stinging, numbing sensation. Is it weird that I can feel these things like that in my dreams, but not feel hungry? I'm also able to go to the bathroom in my dreams without having any accidents in real life. People tell me that's weird too. Maybe I'm not as normal as I thought I was. But I suppose that's been pretty obvious by these messed up dreams I've been having lately, hasn't it? When the dark man finished his gleeful onslaught, he dropped me very suddenly and violently to the floor, and then kicked me and walked out of the room. It looked like my dream self wasn't getting any moldy supper tonight. As I lay on the ground, weakly rolling on in my own self-pity, I hazily woke up again. <sighs> this has to stop. I'm going to tell my friends the whole story today without censoring myself, and I'm going to make sure they understand how distraught I am about all this. I really need someone to listen, to be there for me right now. I just need to know that someone cares, so I won't feel like God himself has abandoned me anymore. I'm going to meet them in a private place after school today. Maybe the third floor landing. No one ever goes up there for anything. I'm going to spill my guts, and I'm going to tell them everything. And if they still don't take this seriously, I'll make them, no matter how long we all have to stay there and discuss it. <sighs> I had the weirdest daydream in class today. I really must not be getting enough sleep if I'm conking out at my desk. At least this time it wasn't one of my nightmares I've been plagued with for so long. Seems I only have those at night. Hence the name, I guess, right? 
Still, it did feel like it might have something to do with them. It was hazier, more surreal sort of dream than the hard, easily recollectable sort that I've grown accustomed to. I remember being on an island, a very seedy, rundown island like Somalia or something. Not that Somalia is an island, but you know what I mean. I was bound and gagged, it seems to be the common theme, and surrounded by men wearing bandanas for face masks. In front of me was a small rowboat, and offshore there was a much larger vessel stalled atop the waves. I don't remember how I supposedly got there, but I think I remember being on vacation or something. You know, there's always that sort of dream omniscience that lets you know that things you shouldn't know because you didn't actually dream about them. One of the masked men poked me in the back with a rifle, prodding me onto the boat. Another man, this one taller and darker than the rest, and wearing a different kind of mask, got in the boat with me and started rowing me offshore towards the anchored ship. There was something kind of familiar about him, though, but I woke up before anything else had happened. I was a little shaken up by my dream, but I still determined to talk to my friends and get them to understand what I was going through. I managed to get them all up to the third floor landing of the school stairwell and corner them there. I told them that I really needed to talk, and that this time I really needed them to listen. They looked at me curiously, and I started to tell them everything. All of the horrible details of what had been going through night after night after night. The abuse, the rape, the beatings, the vile conditions, and even some really gross stuff that I haven't even mentioned up to this point. Like when I dreamt that the masked man made me clean the whole floor of my cell with my tongue. That was probably the worst one. All three of them stood in awe by what I was describing to them, and when I finished, they just stared at me like I was crazy or something. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe I just needed them to support me so that I could stop being crazy. But life is never that easy, is it? Their eyes lowered in a sarcastic sort of glare as all three of them looked at each other and then at me. They told me that there was just no helping me. They said that they had tried to be supportive and to hear me out as I talked about all these crazy dreams and perverted crap, but that they had just had enough and that they didn't want to be involved with this anymore. They told me I just wasn't worth it. My heart sank when they said this. My friends, or these people that I thought were my friends anyway, had abandoned me. They were my only support, and now they were gone. They walked back downstairs telling me to just leave them alone from now on and there was nothing else I could do. I was alone now in the world. No friends. No parents. No parents! It never occurred to me until just now, but I realized something. I can't remember my parents' faces. I must see them at least daily, every morning at the breakfast table and every night at dinner, but... I can't remember any of that either. I can't remember ever getting up, getting ready for school. And just like that... I awake. Now, here I lie, on my cold, stone prison floor, unable to feel the hunger that eats at me, or the pain of my scars left from yesterday. I can smell the horrible stench of the room that surrounds me, and it is here that I realize that I have been abandoned, left to the mercy of my cruel captors. I don't remember when the dreams began. For a while, it felt like I would be able to find escape in them forever. But now, as I lie weak and forlorn, the only comfort I am able to provide myself is found in three empty little words. I am real. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked my video, please hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos since I upload something every day. You can also click that notification bell so you can know when I upload a new video. See you on the other side!